the network. On the video, makes perfect yep. sense. We shouldn't have to be, yeah, anticipating what they're going to do for it, how to market it, because obviously that shows a lack of, you know, user friendliness that we're having to debate where it'd be best to go. Yep. So there's not a lot to figure out. Exactly. Carrying on with carrying on with, with TikTok, uh, another thing I wanted to get your thoughts on, obviously, as you know, running sort of TikTok campaigns yourself, is the idea now that labels are taking a decision to cho- to change the names of tracks after they've already come out because they are not so search friendly. So, for example, electronic producer Surf Messer he had a single called uh, I L Y, which did did very well on TikTok and, and on Spotify, and Obviously, people were searching for I love you and it wasn't coming up. So therefore, there's a, there's a dilemma. So I took the decision to call it I-L-Y brackets, I love you, I love you baby, I should say. Um, so what, what are your thoughts on this whole, are we going to see a new trend now of all the songs like being named exactly what they should be from the start or are we going to see a lot of these sudden name changes? I think you're going to see a lot of sudden name changes among the ones that start to get traction, right? Right. It'll have to be worth it after it hits a certain threshold. But the beauty of this is people are starting to realize that TikTok is, one, that music discovery platform, but also this embedded search engine. It's been that way from the beginning in a way that a lot of people haven't really paid attention to. Even... And you can see this coming even before their library was really built out and the partnerships were in a better place because our run campaigns and just, well, you know, if you, if you pay attention to the kids, which they've started doing, I started doing probably a, at least a year back, right? You'll, you'll have a song name and then you'll have parentheses, the rest of it. Yeah you pay attention a lot of people don't realize i can't remember which one name was first now but um doja cat song had two names and eventually it became another name um i think i don't know i think they might call it moo now but at one point it was bitch i'm a cow or something yeah. like that right and and then all of a sudden they added the second title until it kind of got searched enough or had enough visibility where they removed um look kind of forgot about the other title. Some of it might've been for search engine regions. Some of it might've been for um, some other cl- uh, just censorship reasons in that particular case. But the need for being agile only increases in a fast mo- moving digital era where so much stuff has the opportunity to get moving without you knowing. We're almost in a reactionary marketing climate where the goal is to put shit out there in the best positioning to move far, but you're not sure if it moves so far. So once you put things in a position, you watch. And based on what happens, you need to now be able to steer the ship to get to your end goal, right? Whether that means I'm letting the fan select the song off of the project based on how many, you know, who, which one is most listened to or based on what are people calling it? Because if people are calling mm-hmm. this, calling it that why would i not uh go with what they uh they uh have called it so a quick story there's this drink called hypnotic very popular in the early 2000s uh right. for the, because of its color it was blue and they uh, it was actually initially called hypnotique right but after just kind of pushing it getting it out there they heard somebody say, yo, man, that hypnotic, like they just said it. And yeah. then, oh, bam, I'm going to use that, that name, right? It makes sense to call it what other people are calling it, and that's a lot catchier, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same thing. All this stuff applies, and you're, you're going to get the best successes out of it. So for labels to be able to change that, because we can change that, just do an organic uploaded sound, but they're going to want to do it, do the most efficient, trackable source which that library system still has so much gains to do i would i want it to it to be the best route it just isn't yet yeah. um, um a lot of times but yeah it's it's it only makes sense in whatever way possible do spotify uh, whether it's spotify tiktok any function of marketing to be able to be changed 
after the fact in some form or fashion based on the feedback that we're getting. Because it gets me thinking, like, if you're an artist and you, you know, you've got your song coming out or it's out already and you've now identified the 15 second clip you want to use for TikTok campaigns, if your uh-huh. song title is not in that 15 second clip, you've got to change it, really, in this, in this current that's, situation. That is, uh, yeah, that's a great observation. That's probably a good way to think about it. That's, the, that's what I was just thinking about now as this conversation has been going. I'm thinking, yeah, you really need to capture, you, you've got that 15 seconds to capture them. They need to remember a key buzzword from it. But, yeah. So Think about Get a Renegade. And it's, it's a few songs like this where the song took off, but the part on TikTok that took off actually preceded the song. Yeah. <laughs> the song wasn't even in the viral clip. It was just the lead up and the, you know, producer tag. Yeah, there are so many songs where they haven't actually used the chorus in the clip. So therefore, it, again, that changed the whole thing. Like, if you've been, you know, marketing your song around the chorus and, you know, using the name from the chorus, if that's not the bit that hits, you have to adapt quickly. So it's, it's all just... about what works, man. It's all about what works. Not what you... And I, it's interesting because I wonder if artists are going to get more comfortable with this because artists have become more and more marketing savvy and, and as they come up in these ages they don't have some of the same stigmas around a lot of that stuff as past generations because you know when you go artist of artist type mentality no this is the name of my song <laughs> you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah exactly like, yeah this is the package this is how i want want it to be i'm not changing it to some random title just because kids are calling it that but yeah i think that might be uh, evolving when we look at the mentality of some of these artists and how they approach their careers. And the, the bigger picture, which is like the best thing about this is that we're naturally moving towards more of like a, a smart speaker voice activation, like generation now, you know, they're, they're in more than mm-hmm. 50% of the homes in the U S smart speakers now. And obviously voice search is going to be very, very important for the top songs. And if you've got a search friendly song, you're ticking all those boxes. So, so again, it's even more important, not just in TikTok, but overall as we you know, move towards this sports activation um, sort of like market. Because there's a report that came out today saying that by 2024, there's going to be more um, voice activation um, devices than there is people on the planet. So it is all moving towards that direction. So it's very, very important that you've got these search-friendly terms for your songs. Man, that's an interesting step. It makes sense, obviously, since so many people have multiple, but that's that's interesting to hear. Um, one thing that I just randomly thought about due to this whole search engine thing um, is actually this one artist that I was working with, his search, his SEO was so bad. And we were trying to get it going on TikTok. And no matter what, when people would try to search it, it was so incongruent on different platforms. YouTube, it has a dollar sign here, over here, it, it right. doesn't, and all these different things. It was so hard to find, and it was dope, really dope artists, really dope concepts. Uh, I really loved what he was doing, but that particular issue is a real thing because at that time you have people going from TikTok to Google search. Nope, not if you don't pop up, that's an issue, or TikTok. Yeah. Spotify, right? All these kind of how um, you know I've had that search engine conversation at large, comparing the platforms and um, yeah. Amazon, Spotify essentially is a is a music search engine at this point, right? And and and, and took that niche in that marketplace. So it's um yeah, every. It's the network. Oh.